Seems like everybody's working on their quintuplets. You can barely log into YouTube without hearing a drummer play something in groups of five. And it seems that to a certain extent, these tuplets have replaced odd time signatures as the new trendy rhythmic thing to do. And actually for good reason, I think, because there's a lot of exciting terrain to explore within this realm. And there's one groove in particular that stands out, the so-called quintuplet swing. The normal swing that we all know and love is based on triplets, three notes in a beat. And if you accent the first and third notes, you get swing. Quintuplet swing is based on five notes per beat, and if you accent the first and fourth notes, you get a similar feel, but with its own distinct flavor. Quintuplet swing has a certain unevenness to it. Five is an odd number, and it doesn't quite fit to the grids that we're used to hearing most of the time in music. So this can be really useful for emulating, say, Dilla beats or certain kinds of hip hop grooves. It can also be useful for emulating a, quote, unquantized feel, but with the distinct feature that you can quantize it if you so choose. Listen to the difference between these two grooves. First, we have a normal shuffle based on triplets. And then we have the quintuplet groove. Quintuplet swing lies somewhere between straight and swung eighth notes, and so it's got this really groovy, sort of pleasing effect. You know, when you listen to a New Orleans drummer or to John Bonham, they're not playing completely straight and mechanical, and they're also not playing 100% swing. It's somewhere in between, and so this quintuplet swing is a good way to get into that middle territory, which is so interesting. Now, quintuplets themselves are nothing new. You've got composers like Stravinsky using these rhythms at least 100 years ago, if not much earlier. David Bruce has a really great video about 100-year-old polyrhythms that will really kind of blow your mind as to how old some of these seemingly modern concepts are. But, you know, the point is these rhythms have been around for a while. But what's different now is that there's been an evolution in the way that these rhythms are being played. You've got bands like Animals as Leaders. You've got Tigran Hamasian, who is an amazing pianist. You've got Annika Nilis, who's doing some amazing stuff on the drums. And she's really brought these tuplets in this new groovy modern context into a new light. And she's really popularized that. And before that, you got a bunch of people on the prog side of things, drummers like Virgil Donati, Mike Mangini, Marco Miniman, who all have done really crazy stuff in this tuplet realm and also odd time signatures and you know, you name it as far as rhythm goes. And then like any drummer that ever played with Zappa ever, obviously they know what they're doing with these kind of rhythms too. But I still feel that that's not necessarily quintuplet swing, which is more of this new evolution that is happening, which I find really, really exciting. There's so many other people that have made contributions in this realm. So I made a Spotify playlist that contains some of my favorite quintuplet jams. So be sure to check that out in the description below. The first time I was exposed to the idea or even the possibility of something like quintuplet swing, I mean, nobody was playing this in their music. The first time that I heard something like this was in, it must've been 2008 or nine in around that time. And I was watching a video of Vinny Caliuta play a drum solo, probably in my dorm room at Berkeley, you know, just watching drum solos all the time. And Vinny was playing this solo, which I can no longer find now. So if anybody knows what I'm talking about, help me find it. But anyway, Vinny was playing with a big band or some sort of large ensemble. And he was doing his Vinny thing, playing his Vinny licks. And then he broke out into this five pattern. which sounded like a shuffle, but it was based on hitting every fifth, 16th note. So it still wasn't even quintuplets, but it was a shuffle that sounded, you know, a little bit strange because it was based on fives. And that was the first time I thought, ah, that's a really cool sound. And what if you put that into quintuplets, then you can make a whole song with it. And wouldn't that be cool? Quintuplet grooves in general offer a lot of advantages that odd time signatures don't. One of the problems that can happen with odd time signatures is that they can sometimes just be a little bit annoying to listen to if you don't understand them. Now, this isn't always the case, but it certainly happened to me many times where I heard a song and I just didn't comprehend what was going on and I hated it. But after listening to it a few times or 10 times or 100 times, you know, I came around to, ah, okay, that's in 1916 and now I can follow along and now I actually really like this song. We tend to like things that are familiar to us and dislike things that are not. 
This is a psychological phenomenon known as the mere exposure effect, which basically says that the more we're exposed to something, the more likely we are to like it. Now, does this mean that if you listen to any song a thousand times, you're gonna love it? No, but it does increase the odds significantly. Now, one of the cool things about tuplets is that you don't necessarily have this problem. Right, so with a time signature, you might need to really understand it and be able to follow along to enjoy it. Again, not always, but sometimes is the case. With tuplets, it's quite easy to put them into a really familiar context, say a time signature of 4-4 with a giant snare drum hit on two and four, everybody's gonna understand that. And then you can put whatever subdivision you want in between those beats, and you don't necessarily have to understand what's happening there intellectually to appreciate it. it just sounds like, okay, here's a beat. Yeah, there's some weird stuff happening in there, but I can still follow this pulse and I can follow this groove. It's not as in your face and overtly mathematical about it. So how do we go about learning these rhythms and applying them to music? Well, this is a massive subject and it would require many, many videos to explain this thoroughly. Um, but there are a few core principles which you can apply immediately to get started with this. The first thing is that you need a counting system. You must count over these rhythms if you want to reach a really high degree of proficiency. Now, for me, what a high degree of proficiency means is that I, I want to be able to play any subdivision between one and 20 notes in a single beat, in a pulse, and I want to have a high degree of freedom in what I can play both within a, an individual subdivision and in switching between them. I wanna be able to go between seven and 17 and play you know, whatever I want in either of those subdivisions and flawlessly switch between them. Now, that's a lot to ask for, but that's the ideal that you want to shoot for. That's what I am shooting for anyway. The counting system that I use and that I have benefited from massively over the last 10 years is Mike Mangini's what he calls Not Quite Doubled. And this is a system that I'm not gonna go into explaining here. You should go try and find his books. This is in volume two of his Rhythm Knowledge books. He also explains this in a uh, like app download thing in the Drum Guru app. There's a lesson that you can buy for odd time signatures where he explains this counting system. But the point is, you know, whether you use this or some other system, you need some consistent way to count um, odd numbers. Now, one trap that a lot of people fall into is the sort of additive method of like, okay, five can be made up of a group of two and three or three and two. And that's seemingly what we're doing with quintuplet swing. But uh, let me just expand on this. What if you go to a larger number? So things start to change because you get to a seven, then you have a lot more ways that you can split up the beat. You've got two, two, three, three, two, 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 three, two. What if you wanna do four and three? Or what if you wanna do five and two? And what happens if you wanna accent something in the middle of one of those? Like, are you really gonna learn how to hear seven tuplets in like 12 different ways, just to cover all the different twos and threes and fives, I don't think it's a very good idea. I think it's a much more practical approach to have one way that you're gonna hear every single rhythm in septuplets. So if you count one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four, one, then whatever accents you play within that are always gonna fit into this, into the system, which means that every note is either on an on beat or an off beat, period, end of story. It simplifies your life a lot. And then especially if you wanna to go to a bigger number, think of how many ways there are to split up a 13 or a 17 tuplet. You know, so if you wanna have a lot of freedom in there, you need, in my opinion, to pick one way that you're always gonna hear this rhythm and stick to it. With a small number like quintuplets, you might have an argument where you could say, okay, I'm gonna learn how to hear every rhythm in quintuplets, both as two plus three and as three plus two. And I'm gonna learn how to hear everything with those accents in those places. But you're still doing twice as much work. It'd be better, in my opinion, to learn how to hear it one way, and then everything is gonna be on or off. And that's only for quintuplets. Once you get into bigger numbers, the number of possibilities expands exponentially. So with septuplets even, you've got uh, four times as many permutations. So we go from 32 possible rhythmic permutations in fives to 128 permutations in sevens. And if you wanna learn how to hear that as two, two, three, 
two, three, two, three, two, two, five plus two, four, three, three, four, then you're, you've got hundreds and hundreds of ways to hear things in seven. Whereas if you just hear it one way, then you've only got one like list of things to learn. So my approach is to go look at the extreme cases. What's the hardest thing that I would ever need to do, which is like a 19 tuplet and I'll probably almost never need to do that. But if I do, I know that the system is gonna work. And if your system works for the extreme cases, it's probably gonna work for everything else that's easier than that, which is not usually true of the reverse. So that would be my recommendation as far as counting goes. The second thing is that you've gotta develop a vocabulary somehow. Now the way that we usually do this with a lot of musical things is first of all by listening. And this is easier said than done, especially with rhythms like these tuplets, which are not so commonly used because we don't have as many examples of this to listen to. Nowadays, more artists are using these kind of rhythms, so it's a little bit easier to find examples of this and you know possible things that you can learn from, but a lot of it really comes down to experimentation. You know, you've got to create something out of nothing. And so a lot of this just happens through experimentation. You've got to learn the permutations and see what those sound like and see which ones you like. Maybe learn some different stickings. What does a four or a six sticking sound like in a five? And is that something I wanna use? You know, you've gotta go through that experimentation process on your own um, since there are so few examples to learn from. To many people, these rhythms might seem strange or bizarre, and in some cases they are. But at the end of the day, they're really just another option. And there's really no reason that we have to play a certain number of notes in a certain space of time, you know, versus another. So it's just another option. It's another color to paint with, and it's a lot of fun. So come along for the ride. It's a lot of fun to do this. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy playing around with these rhythms on your own. Um, definitely check out the Spotify playlist below for some quintuplety awesomeness, and thank you for watching.